So far, it's not actually that bad, but I don't know what he's about to do either. I think those are just gonna go that way, so that's easy enough. Just gotta avoid those while hitting him. Yeah, easy. I think I've got it all figured out now. First off, I'm gonna sacrifice 2,000 gold to increase the effectiveness of food. That way I don't die every 10 seconds. This way I'll get at least 20 seconds out of this game. And then increased range damage, because the further away I can kill enemies from, the easier this is all gonna be. Also, I understand that once I craft any of these, I only get them for a single run, but once I craft them, I am able to find them in the world. So I'm gonna go with the adventurer's hat, which helps me find secret rooms. I'm gonna use that on my very first run, because I'm feeling lucky. I may also have a small exploit for this, we'll find out in the future when I bother, but this one, restores all missing health. That's gonna come in handy when I actually want to do a serious run. But for now, it's just back to the grind. I finished the first floor. Well, I haven't found any secret rooms, I have found leftovers, find old gross food and chests. That's actually gonna be hugely helpful as long as I find a lot of chests. I'm also pretty nervous about me not finding any secret rooms. It makes me think either the hat's not working or I'm walking right past all the things I should be seeing. The store has a new item today. For 950 gold, discover more treasure rooms. See, that combined with the thing where I should find more secret rooms should be great, but considering I haven't found any of either yet, I'm not sure how well these things actually work. And, um... For some reason, after buying that, I got 10,000 gold. I'm not really going to ask any questions there, but yeah, that uh, apparently just gave me a whole bunch of gold. So great. I guess this counts as the first secret room. Mostly just a ham and a bunch of purple orbs, but the purple orbs are great. Because down the road, I can use them for a super run, which will make things hopefully easy. Since I'm feeling lucky, we'll take the freeloader draught. Two bombs gets one of these. It'll hopefully give me an item I need that'll get me more bombs or items down the road. Oh, okay, it just gives me that for free, which removes a curse. Fine. Not entirely sure what this one is, Golden Powder, crafted at the blacksmith. I assume it makes the bombs really big, and I'm really excited about that one. Definitely not very often you find a room with this many statues holding gold. Ah. Suddenly I find myself back in this room with my friend the gargoyles that killed me last time. I know I really need that key, but I'm gonna have to go for this anyway. This room is probably gonna kill me. I wonder if I can just kill these guys now. If I drop a bomb next to him... Oh, it does do a lot of damage. Can I hurt him now? I've only got one bomb left, so let's see if that'll finish him off. Okay, that's one down already. We're off to a good start. If I'd known this room was going to be this room, I would have stocked up on bombs first because I could have killed two of these already, but at least I got all the items to do extra damage right now, so these guys should actually die a lot easier than last time. Picking up just about right where we left off. Look at that. One left already. And they haven't even done any damage to me. Well, there's the first bit of damage. Second bit was just a little bit on fire for a second, but I think we got this one beat. As soon as it gets out of statue form, we'll take care of it. Ow. Yeah, they do way too much damage. I just want to say that now. All right, master's key. A key to something better left forgotten. All right, well, I wish you could open some of the other doors. One key left, so I'm going to use it to go to the shop in the hopes I can buy more keys for other locked doors. Okay, good. We got at least one key here. This one gave me bombushka. Bombs in bombs in bombs. I have a feeling they're going to be like... Russian nesting bombs, which sounds like a lot of fun. I can't wait to put those to use. Also now, I've got to try and find a secret where the princess is or whatever was being held, and I don't know where to do that. So I'm just going to start dropping some bombs everywhere in the hopes that that turns up again. Hopefully that's it there. Okay, they do drop a lot of bombs. I've got to be really, really careful with those. This might actually be just the room I need. I'm pretty sure it started like this. So this would be the luckiest thing ever if I actually did this first try on my first run. And as long as I don't do anything really stupid to screw this up, we actually made it right back here. That's awesome. Okay, I don't need you guys. I need to go in here. Hopefully this is not a bad thing. This might just kill me. I don't really know what this is. The goat woman. Have I been granted pardon? Is it true I can return to my duties? Yeah, go for it. I don't care. Are we sure this peasant has authority over the prisoner's release? Well, I have the key, don't I? Well, he does have the key. See, listen to your mom. My child, I will return to Arkanos. He and I have some matters to discuss. Oh, she's gonna kill him. I will see you up top. Thank you again for freeing me. Uh, about my reward, I would love one. Alright, she's sending her back. Hopefully that was worth it for me. You just do anything you're told, don't you? That means a lot, coming from the knight who obviously serves her. I just hope the king doesn't have my head for this. I'll put in a good word for you. Don't you worry. I really hope I get some huge reward for letting her out. Well, this is a very dangerous room. Three cursed chests, so I can get three curses, but also three pretty good items. I'm feeling lucky, so let's just go for it. I can remove one curse if I want to. Why do I never get curses this useless? Heal nearly no bomb damage. I don't care because I don't use bombs to damage enemies. What do we got here? Decrease swing speed. Eh, that's not the end of the world. I can deal more swing damage. Hopefully this one isn't too bad. Then I can remove one of these. More mimics than you would like. Well, I don't ever really find them, so that actually wasn't that bad. I'm going to use this to hopefully remove... Yep, there we go. That was perfect. Remove the right curse and everything. And since there's so many bombs anyway, let's see if I can blow up these rocks. Hopefully finding more secrets. Those bombs are so dangerous. I'm glad the bomb damage is actually decreased. Was there always two secrets out of this room? Am I walking right past all of these? 
I feel like I'm playing the game very wrong, but getting very lucky today. And more swing damage again. I'm gonna have like the best first run ever. And this is a new room. One skeleton key. Eight glowy pumpkins. And whatever this door is. I assume this is where I come out when I defeat the boss of this floor. Do I sacrifice it? Yeah, it's only 15 health. For 50 gold. Not sure I like that deal. Let's blow up some statues. And nothing. Can we turn it again for 20 health? We'll maybe come back to that if we find some extra food. While I've had a phenomenal first run today, I'm not overly optimistic about this boss, being that I've only ever fought him once, and I really don't know what he does. I do have lots of power-ups and damage right now, so this is going to be as good as anything. We're just going to kind of charge into this and hope for the best. I don't really know what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm going to try and feel it out while also trying to do some damage. Easier said than done. Okay, so far it's a lot of confusion. It's just going to take a long time to learn what this boss actually does. I think you can hit him between the orbs, but you got to go between the orbs to actually do that. So far, it's not actually that bad, but I don't know what he's about to do either. I think those are just going to go that way, so that's easy enough. Just got to avoid those while hitting him. Yeah, easy. It would be really nice to have some healing on the fly. I wish I had like one healing potion even. That would make a world of difference. I could probably actually beat him if that was the case. But as it sits, not looking optimistic. Also, if I could kill some of the... Wait, did he die? He wasn't low enough on health yet. I must have done a big critical on him. Great. Wow, I'm getting crazy lucky today, and I get to keep these power-ups moving forward. I could use more health, though. And I got the key. I don't know how I'd manage to do that, but I did it. And what is this? Artifact discovered. Mortar's Fragment. Well, hopefully that has some actual use. Mediocre Ring. That's the best reward I've ever had for defeating a crazy hard boss. Catalyst. Great. I guess I'm just that good at video games. That's the only conclusion we can draw from this. New area, here we come. I've just got to play super conservatively, being that I have 28 health currently. Please give me some health. Yeah, we got some. And what is this? Hall's map, not recommended for use. Oh yeah, that's just a quick way to get here. These pillars are full of gold. I'm going to have so much gold after this. I'm even going to let that guy have one. That's for you, little guy. Already I've taken damage when I shouldn't have, so we're not off to a really great start. Whoops. And one more hit and I'm dead. I need to actually focus on what I'm doing. And that whole mimic cursing uh, is maybe going to come back to bite me right now. I was hoping for a chest full of food. Instead, I got danger. Crisis averted. We got him. Didn't get any health back, but we killed the chest. And I'm absolutely going to spend 194 on some fish right now. Didn't give me a lot of health, but it gave me enough to give me some confidence moving forward. Okay, so far so good, but I feel like this is one of the rooms that the longer I sit in here, the harder it's going to get. Not going to lie, this is probably going to be the last room I do, because I have no idea what any of these things are, and there's a lot of things going on. It's really going to hurt to watch all that gold come streaming out. And there it goes. Killed by a skeleton. Look at all the items and gold getting spewed everywhere. That was thousands and thousands of gold left behind. But after my incredible first run, I do get to keep 11,000 gold and 270 purple orbs, so we're after a pretty good start. Oh, plus we freed what's-her-name, so let's go see what effect that has on the world. Peasant, the others may think you're all the same, but I'm not so simple. Whatever you say, my rescuer, he is lost to the dungeons, either dead or imprisoned. He's pretty dead. A fate you will likely share. Don't care. They deserve some respect. I will help both you and your subordinates, but I refuse to pretend they are anything but what they are. Otter. Lilith has been returned to me, and I am grateful for that. These altars can grant you power, but you must know the sacred prayer. Take these tomes, lamb. You too can pray for his power. Well, okay. That sounds mildly helpful. Beware, these blessings come at a cost. Are these the ones I already have? Because that's not very helpful. But sure. And we have the option to buy this. Sensor. Start with a random blessing. I guess I start any run with a random blessing. I'm not maybe going to buy that until I know what the blessings actually do. Upgrade time. Right away, I'm going to upgrade the gold bag for sure, because that way we lose less gold every single time. And that probably would have accounted for a lot less lost gold on that last run. You know what? I'm going to do the gold bag again. That way we're losing less gold every time. It's just an investment in the future. Then we have 1800 left over conveniently, so more health. 14,000 for the next gold bag. I better start getting good at this. In our first shrine, let's see if these are actually useful. So far, it doesn't really seem so because I actually have to pay for something. Healing is more effective, but I don't know if I have one of those things. Uh, apparently I do. Healing is less effective. Healing is more effective. I guess that balances out, so great. You didn't see that. And since this run is going so terribly anyway, I'm basically dead on the very first floor. Let's kill ourselves with about a thousand gold to see how much gold we remain with. 
There goes all my stuff. Nothing great. Don't worry. But we kept 860 gold of our not even 1100. So we're looking at something like 85% kept, which is way better than when we started. So it should only take me like 40 hours to get a good run going again. Looks like I can manage about 7,500 gold per run with my current thing. That leaves me with 6,000 gold after every run. Takes a while to do it, but we can grind up some gold pretty easy this way. And I am actually going to buy this. Start with a random blessing. I'm hoping it's a blessing, not with a curse. If it comes with a curse, it's basically useless to me. Wait, can we get another one? Start with a more powerful random blessing. Well, we'll move on to that one next, but let's see what this one can do. And the blessing we have to start with is deal more swing damage. So if I had zero gold right now, I would just repeatedly restart until I find out all the blessings we can get. And then I can figure out the good ones and the bad ones. This might actually be my first opportunity to kill one of these. Yep, it's dead. I was hoping once it fully died it would drop something amazing, but it seemed to just be another trinket, which gave me healing is more effective, which is good, but considering how rare those things are, I was hoping for something a little better. I actually got this right for once. I didn't think this was actually possible. Turns out it is. Great. That only cost 150 gold and I get all my gold back and more. Here's an important question. Do we spend 1500 hard-earned gold on super special supplies? Stock relics at Dibble's Emporium. Yeah, let's do it. I love when I spend gold and I don't understand what I'm spending it on. And no artifacts. No idea what I spent my money on last run, but it was expensive. Since I only have 826 gold, I'm going to respawn a few times in the first dungeon to see all the blessings I can potentially get right off the bat. That way I know and I can start out as good as possible. Faster swing speed. And increase gold income. Yeah, I'm going to go for a run just on this one. Increased gold income is huge. Here's a good one. I've got double wealth increased. So I'm going to play this run very carefully to get as much gold as I possibly can. Well, it was a good run. 10,500 gold. And I actually get to keep that all because I found a sewing kit along the way. I'm actually going for this one. 8,000 gold. Start with a more powerful random blessing. 20,000 for the next upgrade. So yeah. Well, I think I'm going to grind through this dungeon one more time. And then I'll go for a run in a big way. What's my blessing? Deal more swing damage. So I basically just get two blessings instead of one. So after that last annoying but eventful run, I'm left with 8,200 gold to spend on upgrades before I go on my super run. Which admittedly still can't buy a lot, so I'm going to go with extra swing damage and then extra health. That'll leave me with a little bit of extra gold to buy some bombs or keys before I start. Okay, we've got one bomb to start, that's something. Now I'm going to spend all of my purple orbs on stuff. I do have a stockpile of 446, so I can get a lot of items. I just need to decide which ones I can and can't get. Just in case I can't afford them all. So... When I go to buy a second item, the little guy comes and takes it away anyway, so I guess they just store it in the world until I need it? I was hoping to be able to use them all at once, but I guess that's just not a thing. So let's just spend eight more purple things on one more of these. Yeah, I don't actually get those, they just place them in the world. You'll just have to find that one later. Obviously I'm not buying any more of those then, because that's kind of a waste right now. I am going to bring the potion of true sight, discoveries nearby secrets, and I'm going to try and find something right away that's going to help me get this run going. Because I've already got some items and I might as well just go for it now. I guess this is now my ultimate run. And I do have double extra gold, so yeah, good enough. So what does the potion do? Discover nearby secrets. Oh, it just lasts a while and shows me nearby secrets, I guess. Okay, I see how it works. All I gotta do is walk to a certain area and it gives me whatever this is. Do I need to use a bomb there? Yeah, okay. I think it's giving me extra secrets maybe. Or it just shows me where the sparkles are. Blue orbs, those are those things I spend on uh, this stuff that doesn't really work. Interestingly, it does also show some of the secrets that are below things too. I didn't like this potion at first, but now I do. It showed me all the secrets I wouldn't have otherwise seen, and that's pretty handy. I never actually realized before that there's two different blue chests. I always assumed there was only one. But I think one actually gives artifacts and the other doesn't. I really need to start paying attention to things. Okay, so this one gives me a whole bunch of gold, which is great. And the dark blue chest gives me purple orbs and a recipe. This is a new one. That's on hit to ignite your enemies. That sounds counterproductive. I already get lit on fire more than I'd like to admit. And that's the reason I didn't pick up the oil boots two minutes ago, because there's oil all over the ground already. Any fire ignites everything, and it's just a big mess from there. I just drank a potion that dropped a random chest, and it dropped it randomly here, so I can't actually get to it. Okay, might have to rethink my strategy just a touch. We'll pretend this one didn't happen. Interestingly, upon respawning, this guy's actually selling a relic. Gold will sometimes duplicate itself. That's interesting, but more so just because he's actually selling a relic. I guess he can on occasion do that. So I could play the patience game and wait till I find a relic. But then again, that wouldn't be that easy to do because I'd have to maintain some amount of gold to be able to buy the relics anyways. Here's what we're going to do instead. I'm getting a four leaf clover. Enemies drop gold when killed. I will be able to use this on my current run. Combined with this one, gold will sometimes duplicate itself. So enemies drop gold, which will sometimes duplicate itself. This is going to be a high gold run. 
less golden kernels. Duplicate all gold in the room. And you know what? While we're at it, increase potion duration. And I probably want a second potion on me for a while too. Now I just have to hope I get really lucky and get the double extra gold as I enter the dungeon. Then we'll be laughing. We'll be rolling in gold. Also, I'm going in with 1400 gold. That way I can buy whatever I need from the markets. So our power up is... Oh, more swing damage. That's fine. We'll still get tons of gold this way. So far, so good. I've killed one enemy so far, dropped one piece of gold. So even if every enemy drops only one, we're still going to get a lot of gold along the way. I just need to really focus myself and not chase the gold more so and just stay alive and kill enemies. That's my main goal. Once I get the right room with the right amount of gold, I'll use my potion to double it and then we'll see a real gold explosion. Here's an interesting floor. It's interesting because... Never mind. I was hoping that rat's nest would last forever and it would continually spawn rats and therefore spawn gold, but it seems like the nest only lasts so long. That was something I've been curious about for a while. I've also just picked up Gold Frenzy, gain temporary damage and picking up gold. So once I find the right room and we make a gold explosion, I'm going to do a lot of damage. It's all coming together. All right, I'm going to use the potion that doubles the gold and we're going to watch it explode just like that. My own little gold room. And the monsters can't even get in. Oh, maybe they can't again. We'll keep them away for a sec. Other than that though, we got lots of gold all to ourselves. Might have still been able to find an even better room for it all, but I won't complain. Not really even sure how much that was. We're up to 8,700 gold now. I think it was about 6,000 to start the room. Maybe 7,000. I don't really know. We did get an ace plus... I don't know what that was. 50 damage boost for a second. So that was more damage than we've ever done before. Should we risk it? 1,200 gold? Get something for nothing? Let's do it. I'm feeling lucky. And we're gonna get... Free... This. Remove a curse. Well, if I had a curse, that would be great. This is going to be another really good room for gold, so let's turn it all loose and let it hop around and multiply. Oh, I thought it would be more dramatic than that. Is there really nowhere to pick up a curse on this floor? Oh, here we go. We'll go with faster swing speed. And... It actually makes a pretty big difference. We're doing a lot more damage. And what was that for? Increase the cost of shop items. That's not even a big deal, really. But since I've already spent 1,200 gold on it, no more curse. And I'm feeling lucky again. 15 health, we get one skull, which equals nothing. 20 health... And a bag of bombs. Yeah, we won't push our luck. Another solid gold room. Let's uh, see how this is going to go. The more room they have to hop around, the better. If you pick them up right away, they don't get a chance to hop and multiply. Every time they hop, they do have a chance of doubling. It definitely sucks I'm entering the third dungeon on such low health because it spawns the biggest gold. Every time that big gold duplicates, I would be getting very rich. But I'll take what I can get. Well, this was a very convenient room to find. Those biggest gold nuggets, they're worth 50 gold each, and they duplicate. They can duplicate up to 5, 10 times potentially, so think of all that gold. Will this chest give me an incredible amount of gold? It looks like a bite. Yeah, look at all that. Perfect. Just what I wanted to see. So I have about 12,000 gold before picking all of this up, and afterwards, a little over 13. With all the gold I just picked up, I'm doing 100, 150 crits. Nice damage. That actually saved me in that room because there was a lot of skeletons, so it killed me way fast. Thanks to a convenience shop, basically back to full health again. I'm to right now to go for this. Sometimes drop meat from your enemies, but I don't want to risk two curses. Those two curses could pretty much cripple me. All the way down to halls three now. We're going to see how much gold we get from one single floor. So we're starting out at 14,300. And of course, these little guys are going to get a few of the gold pieces. Ooh, don't want to let that big one get away. But it won't be too bad overall. It didn't multiply as much as I'd hoped it would. But just to get some idea of how much gold we're getting on any given room. About 500 gold just from one room. These are a new type of enemy. I don't know what these are, so I'm just gonna kill them very quickly. Can't really absorb any more damage. I somehow managed to light myself on fire in this room. Take a second to appreciate that. This room. This is probably gonna be the final room of my adventure because these skeletons are really hard to defeat, especially when there's nothing to block their bones with. Wow, I actually managed to kill them all. Not a lot of health left, so we're not gonna get much further, but it's not for lack of trying. What? Did anyone else see that? It wasn't even hurting him. That's not fair. Well, to be fair, I wouldn't have made it much further. That was a pretty good run, though, all things considered. In the end, it worked. Extra gold means extra everything. 16,500 left, and we don't lose any of it.